Hello folks, welcome to Valencia. This is Circuit Ricardo Tormo and behind me is the new Lamborghini Huracan Technica. Now this is a new mid-level model. It sits between the regular Huracan Evo and the top level Huracan STO. It's got bits of both cars mechanically. It's got an STO engine, but it's got suspension much more like the regular Evo. And it's the first Huracan with a rear wheel drive chassis and four wheel steering other than that that top level STO. So it's supposed to mix a little bit of both cars flavor, you know, some of the specialness and the rawness of the STO with more of an everyday use type flavor. So we're gonna drive it on the road, on the track, and hopefully learn a bit more about it. Okay, so this is the Huracan Technica on the road. We'll be on the track later where we will no doubt find out quite a lot more about how this thing handles and performs, but the point of the Technica is that it's got shades of the STO, but mixed in with a whole lot more everyday usability and good touring manners. So let's see if they're really there. I've got the car in, in the default Strada road driving mode now, so the comfy mode. It's riding quite nicely, it's riding all right. It's definitely a milder mannered thing slightly than the STO was. Softer riding, a bit gentler with its control weights, a bit less communicative and raw, obviously. There's just less weight and feel in the steering, less bite to the damping, less sort of connected feel generally. But this is just driving mode number one. And the whole point with the car is that it's supposed to have this broader range of ability. You know, you're supposed to be able to really ramp up the settings when you, when you want to and get whatever, 80, 90% of the appeal of the STO from this car, but then be able to dial it back out again when you want to. Which sounds like a nice idea. So top level usability stuff. Well, I mean, this isn't the most instantly comfortable car of its type. There isn't as much room in it as some supercars offer. It's not got the perfect ergonomic driving position. You feel a bit sort of sat up high. You haven't got much in the way of headroom with a with a helmet on i suspect i'm going to struggle in this car but i always do in lamborghinis because i'm six foot three i have to have the seat inclined a little bit more than i would like that means giving up a bit of leg room as well so you sort of squeeze yourself in to a lamborghini you always have you still do but i don't mind that because the thing looks like some outrageous spaceship doesn't it that's the point and you wouldn't want it to be any different. If they could say, all right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll make it as ergonomically perfect as a McLaren or, or any other rival you might like, but it won't look like that, would the average Lamborghini driver take that compromise? No, of course they wouldn't, and neither should they. So you just make the compromise and it's fine. So this car has the same spring rates and anti-roll bar rates as a regular Huracan Evo. It's got the same adaptive damper as standard, but it's slightly differently calibrated. They wanted a little bit more support and firmness from the body control. This is, you know, a pretty twisty road, but not a particularly bumpy one. And it's dealing with it okay in strada mode, has so far. So let's hit sport mode, see what happens. Oh, more engine noise. Quite a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the ride has got firmer, but I have to say, not masses. On a bumpy road, I wonder if you might feel like you were a little bit trapped in the gap between strada and sport mode like you wanted a sort of an individual mode where you could have most of the sporty settings of the powertrain and the gearbox and the exhaust but the softer damper settings which is you know often a a kind of a, a driving mode i i tend to default to um in modern performance stuff you can't do that here there is no ego mode on the on the selector like there is in, a, in an Urus. Perhaps that's something they could have added, but 
but still haven't and I think it is it is missing a little bit because most modern performance stuff allows you to adjust the driving experience to that level of detail this one still doesn't and they call it the Technica you know they, they call it the the Huracan that's got an added, an added level of sophistication about it they just haven't put that last piece of the jigsaw puzzle in which is a bit of a shame but it's handling nicely isn't it in this sport mode they say the new chassis brain of the car the LVDI or whatever it's called um, it manages the torque vectoring diff and the rear wheel steering to give the car that extra bit of pointiness and agility and a little bit of sort of I think they call it enhanced oversteer to make the handling more accessible, more fun at low speeds. It's not as incisive and as immediately darty as as some rivals, I have to say. As for the engine, I think that's still the main draw, isn't it? That's the that's the main event. When they finally get around to taking it out, it's going to be such a sorry day, I think. You know, because when the Huracan goes out of production, it'll be the end of the line for the V10. There's no other Volkswagen Group car that uses it. That'll be that. And the word is that they're switching to a twin turbo V8, probably related to the one that's already in the group and powers. Bentleys and Audi RS cars and all of that stuff and that's a pretty effusive engine it's got lots of performance but it doesn't sound like that there's all the crackle on the overrun there's that wonderful noise you have to get it spinning up above four and a half before it'll really go but then there's all the response and the performance you would want unless you're totally unhinged and the gearbox goes great with it really fast shifts nicely chosen ratios it just lets you enjoy all of the richness of that engine while you can. Okay. That'll do for now. More when we get to the circuit. Okay, so here we go. Huracan Technica on circuit. I have to say, on the road, I'm a little bit unsure about the way Lamborghini wants to define this car as, as that perfect middle ground usable supercar because at its heart this thing is still pretty wild and loud and demonstrative and I'm just not sure I would want to use a car like that every day but on the track might well be a bit more convincing. Let's see. We've got lots and lots of nice sweeping third gear corners here and a few tighter ones and a few faster kinks. So, oh yeah, sounds good. Right, hard on the brakes. It's a slightly grabby brake pedal, I have to say, but you probably get used to that. They say they've gone for spring rates, which are a bit closer to a, a regular Huracan Evo than they are to an SDO. But damper rates that are a bit firmer. Obviously, we've got the SDO spec engine. It's a kind of a... A hybrid isn't it a bit of a chimera of the two cars but it's certainly fast I'm gonna short shift so you can still hear me but I 
was coming down here a while ago at the top of sixth gear, easily doing 250. And when you're really wound up with this engine, the chassis really starts to come to life, you know, because you've just got the torque in the driven axle. And then the handling balance really starts to come in. Wow! Oh! All that noise! Such a wonderful engine this. And there's all the performance you'd ever want. How's the handling balance? Not bad. That was the limiter. That's another trouble with this car. The engine is just so smooth right way up to the red line. It's almost as if they've set the, the red line 200 rpm short of peak power because the engine just keeps pulling and pulling harder and harder as you close in and then you just smack into it. Oh, but I tell you what, the feeling I'm getting, never mind the official positioning of this car, the fact that they say it's this perfect middle ground between STO and EVO, this thing is really just a better value STO. I think it's got 90, maybe 95% of the grip and the tactile appeal of the STO. Obviously, all of the performance. Lovely handling balance, really lovely. Quite a forgiving chassis, thanks to that slightly long wheelbase. You know, mid engine supercars, they just shouldn't be this easy to throw around. But modern ones, wow. Good. If I had £212,000 or whatever it is, and I wanted the supercar that really feels like now, you know, the current era that's on its way out, unfortunately. This might be the one I'd go for. It's not the new thing. You know, the state of the art is changing so rapidly now. <laughs> Who knows where the supercar will be in five or 10 years time. But for right now, for the way it looks, for the way it sounds, and for how good it has become, there's a lot to be said for the Huracan. Thanks for watching. See you next time.